Good morning. Can I extend a very warm welcome to you all from Ferentosh and Rizolos Free Church as we worship today in conjunction with Dingwall and Strathpeffer Free Church. My name is Callum Ian McLeod and I've been appointed as the interim moderator or locum for Dingwall and Strathpeffer Free Church. Reverend Angus McRae will be inducted to the Free North Inverness congregation at 5.30pm this evening at a special service held in Smithton Church via Zoom. Now instructions for joining the induction service will be given at the close of the service. Now our morning service today comes from my manse study as we are unable to meet in Dingwall Church on this occasion. And I trust that we will know God's blessing as we meet together in Gospel Fellowship. We're going to adopt the words of Psalm 104 as our call to worship. Praise the Lord my soul, O praise him. Lord my God, you are so great wrapped in light as with a garment, clothed in majesty and state. And we're now going to respond to this call to worship by singing to the praise of God the words of Psalm 100. It's the Scottish Psalter version. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. to draw near to God in prayer, let us pray. Gracious God, we praise you for your goodness and mercy. You have brought us together this morning in our respective homes and in other locations to hear the good news of the gospel. We thank you that Jesus, our sinless sin bearer, bore our sin on Calvary's cross. Jesus abolished death. He rose again, triumphant from the grave. 
Jesus, our great high priest, the son of your love who lives forever, world without end, interceding for us, our mediator and advocate with the Father. Lord our God, you are our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in our times of trouble. Like the psalmist, we feel as though the earth has given way during these perplexing and unprecedented days we find ourselves in. Yet your word encourages us not to fear, but to trust in you. Our times are in your hands. Bless, we pray, our respective congregations. We commit your servant, Angus Macrae, to you in light of his induction this evening. We thank you for his 19 years of faithful ministry in Dingwall and Strathpeffer. Bless, we pray, both Angus and Anne as they begin a new chapter of pastoral ministry in the Free North. Bless Dingwall and Strathpeffer on the threshold of a vacancy. Gracious God, remember all whom we commit to your care and keeping at this unsettled time of lockdown. Be near to all who may feel afraid and anxious this day. Be near to all who are unwell. We remember all who have been affected by the coronavirus and we pray for their speedy recovery. We pray too for the vulnerable and those at risk. We especially remember all residents and staff in our local hospitals and care homes at this time. Comfort the bereaved, we pray. Bless and sustain our frontline emergency services. We pray for all NH staff, care workers, volunteers and helpers alike. Remember all who are worried over their work situation and their finances. Grant relief, help and support for all such. Lord our God, give us to be mindful of those who may be self-isolating and feeling lonely and disconnected from family and friends. Enable us all to reach out to each other in our respective communities with the compassion of Jesus. We pray too for our respective governments at Westminster and Holyrood in their efforts to limit the spread of this highly contagious virus. Grant them, along with all medical scientists and health professionals, wisdom, knowledge, understanding and discernment. Your word exhorts us to rejoice in hope, to be patient in tribulation and constant in prayer. So we ask that you would keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Uplift us through the gospel. May the joy of the Lord be our strength. We confess our sins and seek forgiveness for all our shortcomings and wrongdoings. And all we ask is in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Well, can I, at this point, welcome our younger viewers and listeners. Our theme this morning is giving sin a foothold in our lives. Prince Amir sat very comfortably in his tent, self-isolating. It was lockdown in the Arabian desert. There was a biting wind and it was freezing cold. Amir's camel, Sinbad, Sin for short, stood outside, exactly two meters away from the tent, shivering with the cold. This big clumsy camel then looked through the tent flap and asked its master, Amir, if it could just poke its head through the flap into the warmth of the tent. Amir initially said no because of social distancing rules, but did feel a little sorry for his camel and eventually agreed. But then, when Sin the camel said, my nose is warm and comfortable, but my shoulders are cold, 
wouldn't you let my shoulders and front legs into the tent, please? Amir thought and thought again and agreed that it would be okay. After a while, Sin the camel nudged Amir and pleaded again, can I just have my hump in the tent as well? I'm still a little cold. Again, his master Amir thought that Sin's hump wouldn't make a lot of difference, so he agreed. By this time, Sin the camel was almost inside the tent and decided to ask its master if it could now bring its back legs into the tent as well. When Amir eventually agreed to this, Sin the camel came right into the tent and stood looking around the small tent and then said, Master Amir, this tent is too small for you and me. You had better leave and self-isolate outside. Amir spent the rest of the night shivering under the stars next to his tent, while Sin, his camel, snuggled up inside his master's cosy tent. Well, just like the camel's master, Amir, we're easily deceived when it comes to sin. The more we let sin into our lives, the more it demands of us, the more it dictates the more it makes its presence felt and pressurizes us into doing what it wants of us. Like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, we are easily tricked. So, remember, don't give sin a foothold in your life. Don't let sin fool you or hoodwink you. Only Jesus can protect us from sin and sinning. When we trust in Jesus, sin no longer has power over us. And Jesus enables us to see our sin bads for what they are. You see, sin is always bad. However, Jesus is the good shepherd, and he steers us away from sin to the cross and serving him. We're going to draw near to God as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Please join in with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing to the praise of God the words of grace. Your grace that leads the sinner home from death to life forever to the praise of God. Oh, my heart 
Our first reading is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, from verse 25 to verse 30. This is the Word of God. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And our second reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, and we're going to read from verse 38 to verse 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Amen. And we trust that God will add his blessing to the reading of his own holy and inspired word. Now, our text is taken from Luke chapter 10, and the words of verse 39. Mary sat at the Lord's feet. I'd like us to think about two things this morning. Posture and perspective. Every physiotherapist will tell you that your posture matters. It has a bearing on all aspects of your physical well-being, how you stand and sit and walk and talk. Posture in the Christian life matters too. Mary, in Luke chapter 10, adopts the ultimate posture of discipleship, sitting at the feet of Jesus, the key place of learning. Notice how Jesus has her undivided attention as she listens attentively to his words. For Mary, time is of the essence. She makes time for Jesus and will spend time with Jesus. Nothing else matters. In fact, everything goes on hold. Everything else can wait. There is no time like the present. Mary gives her heart to Christ and wishes to have her heart filled with Christ. For Mary, all her domestic chores pale into insignificance 
as she sits and absorbs the words of the Lord Jesus. Mary's life grinds to a halt in order to spend vital time with her Savior. So, what of your posture today? Will you adopt the posture of discipleship and sit at the feet of Jesus just like Mary, focused on him and absorbing his every word? Well, you might be asking, how can I do that? Well, let's look at some practical steps we can take in adopting the posture of discipleship as we see it in Luke 10, 39, as we find ourselves in lockdown, arguably with a little more time to spare. So how can I join Mary at the feet of Jesus? Well, with an open Bible. So set your compass at the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's a good starting point. Because you see, under the guidance of the Gospel writers, you will be taken to the feet of Jesus. In fact, all the Gospel writers will usher you to Jesus. As you read the Gospels, you gravitate towards Jesus immediately, in an instant. You see, the gospel writers in unison cut to the chase and focus on Jesus. And Luke is no exception. He begins his gospel with these words. In the days of Herod, Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a son named Jesus. Notice how the focal point, the epicenter of Luke's gospel, is the person and mission of Jesus. Turn a page or two, and before you know it, you too are anchored at the feet of Jesus. Luke, just like Matthew and Mark and John, explores the life of the person at the heart of the Christian faith, Jesus Christ. And Luke encourages you and I to ask questions like, who was Jesus? Why did he come? what is involved in following him. So, what does sitting at the feet of Jesus look like in practical terms for you and I? Well, let me just begin by saying that regular, disciplined, daily Bible reading matters. Engaging with your Bible equates to a personal engagement with the Lord Jesus at his feet. An open Bible is an opening for God the Holy Spirit to minister to you and I. He will do that for us as we navigate our way through all 66 books of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Yes, the Holy Spirit will reveal Jesus to you and I, and he will usher us to his feet, the ultimate place of teaching. So when you listen to the gospel, you sit at the feet of Jesus. In fact, he is there waiting for you through his word in fellowship with his people in prayer. There you will meet him. That's why I subscribe to our prayer meeting, said John. That's why I prioritize it, John said. Why it matters to me. That's what drives me to go. I don't go out of obligation, John said. I go in, in anticipation. I resolve to go with expectation. They are just like Mary in times past. I've sat at Jesus' feet and listened to his teaching and will do so again this week. It's my Bethany. That's why I'm passionate about my home Bible study group, said Sarah, because there. I have met Jesus. I've had fellowship with him, said Sarah, in, in fellowship with other like-minded Christians who share my longing to sit at his feet and experience his blessing. You see, it's at the feet of Jesus that you and I get our discipleship perspective back. There we are spiritually realigned and restored. So, posture matters. 
So will, will you prioritize your time and space over these days of self-isolation and social distancing to spend more time at the feet of the Lord Jesus? There are positives to lockdown. Lockdown is a chance to slow down. Lockdown is an opportunity to calm down. Lockdown is an opportunity to sit down with Jesus. Secondly, perspective. The renowned missionary Jonathan Goforth, 1859 to 1936, once spoke in a chapel in southern China. When someone asked him at the close of his service, Sir, I have heard you speak three times, and you always have the same theme. You always speak of Jesus Christ. Why? Well, the missionary replied, Sir, before answering your question, let me ask, what did you have for dinner today? Rice, the man replied. What did you have yesterday? The same thing, rice, he said. And what do you expect to eat tomorrow? Rice, of course. It's my staple diet. It gives me strength. I couldn't do without it, sir. He said, it's my very life. Jonathan Goforth responded quickly. What you have said of rice, Jesus is to my soul. He is my staple diet. He is my strength. He is my everything. I can't live without him. He is my very life. That's why I always speak of Jesus Christ. So can you say that today? Mary does, because her perspective is always Christ-centered. Now, I want us to note here how Luke, the gospel writer, provides two quite different individuals. He profiles both Martha and Mary, but they have two very different attitudes to Jesus. Their perspectives are poles apart. Mary is committed to serving. Her sister, Martha, is distracted with much serving. Domestic preparations take precedence. Mary, however, is dedicated and devoted to Jesus. Martha is preoccupied and easily sidetracked. So one absorbs herself in Jesus and the other is self-absorbed. So, question. Are you a Mary or a Martha? Is it time to put your life into perspective? Is it time to reassess your priorities? Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest, Jesus says, in our reading from Matthew 11. Well, Matthew Mary rather responds to this invitation. She comes to the feet of Jesus, pursuing rest for her soul. Martha, on the other hand, worried and upset about many things, dithers and stays on her feet, fretting and becoming increasingly anxious. She is isolating and distancing herself from Jesus. It seems that Martha has a self-inflicted dose of self-isolation. And Jesus tells us that Mary chose well. Martha didn't. And notice how Mary and Martha's home paints a picture of two people who have contrasting attitudes to their guest. Perhaps it's a picture of your own home. What is interesting about Martha is that it is she who welcomes Jesus onto the domestic scene. In principle, you might say that she gets off to a good start, but it doesn't take long to discover that she's not as focused on her guest of honour as she should be. Luke tells us that Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Martha's misguided enthusiasm is telling, isn't it? She's so busy engaged in doing things for Jesus 
that she's not spending any time with Jesus. She's a distracted Christian. And there's a subtle danger there that we should all be sensitive to. You and I can be involved in all kinds of Christian activities, Christian frontline service with good motives. But remember, service for Christ without submission to Christ equates to the Martha syndrome. I may prepare several hundred sermons a year with an open Bible, but if sermon preparation about Jesus is all I do, without a personal devotion to Jesus, without a personal Bible reading strategy, then, as Paul says, without the love of Christ burning in my soul, I gain nothing. In the Old Testament, God speaks of a disobedient Israel, a distracted people spoken of in Isaiah 29, 13, who come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So as we close, let's be sensitive to Martha's distracted perspective and aspire this morning to follow Mary's dedicated perspective. At the end of the day, Mary chose better. And Jesus tells us that what she chose would not be taken away from her. So remember, posture and perspective matter in the Christian life. the benediction, which is taken from Jude, verse 24. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore, Amen.